Hello, everybody. It's John Johnston, Coronation, with your instant reaction to Nebraska's 68-55 to loss to the Indiana Hoosers in basketball. Now, first of all, two things before I really get into the reaction portion of this. Number one, it'd be really nice to actually do a reaction to a win. I mean, football, three and nine. Basketball, I've done reactions for Creighton loss, the NC State four overtime loss, and now Indiana. And number two, you know, football, football is a different sport. And I, I honestly think that, I know that most Nebraska fans don't really follow basketball really well, and we treat it like we do football. So after every football loss, it's like, oh my God, it's the end of the world. Okay, you don't do that in basketball, or you shouldn't. You should just look at this game and, and look at this game right now. Was it a loss? Yes. It's the beginning of the Big Ten basketball season. I quite frankly don't think it's a horrible loss, and I'll tell you why. Uh, I've had Nebraska actually, they played well at times. They got out to a nice 14-4 to lead, I think it was, and then they gave it up. And that's unfortunate, but at least they didn't start out down 20 to 2 and get completely smoked by 40 and that stuff happens in the Big 10 especially when you're playing on the road uh, and that's the key the Big 10 basketball is winning your home games and trying to pick off some on the road so that you can finish above 500 so that you can get into the NCAA tourney that's Nebraska's approach Okay, that's not everybody else. Michigan State's goal is to win the Big Ten. Ohio State, you know, Indiana, God knows they think the world of themselves. Uh, Purdue, you know, Michigan. Those teams, they want to win the Big Ten. What Nebraska wants to do is finish at 500 a little bit better just to get into the NCAA tourney, get this freaking monkey off our back about winning an NCAA tourney game. That's our goal for this season. That's our goal for every season. So what happened in this game? Well, I think it all comes down to three-point shooting. We were 5 of 22 for a team that's going to shoot. Uh, this is not good. Uh, it was really disappointing. Uh, what was that, 22%? Pretty terrible. That was probably th the whole ball game, honestly. I mean, you can point to individuals doing this or that, but that's really what cost Nebraska this game. I... Uh, I think we found, I think this was a good game for Nebraska to start. Uh, it's on the road. It's against Indiana. They love their basketball team. Uh, playing at, uh, what the hell is Indiana? Mackey? Woo, I probably just said Purdue. Assembly Hall. <laughs> now all the Indiana people hate me. Um, I don't know what they have there. They probably have like a 75%, 80% win percentage at home. And that's the thing about playing in basketball. Those are the winning percentages at home are just amazing. And I'll include that in a video later about basketball. I think for Nebraska, what we discovered, which is not good, is this. Probably the biggest thing that bothers me about this game for this season is that Derek Walker is playing, I think, a lot better than I would have expected him to play. But I think he showed in this game that he is really the only dependable big guy we have. And that's, that's bad because it's going to get exhausting. I like think Eduardo Andre shows some promise in there, but he's not physical. And he does this stuff where if he fouls, he mentally gets in his head and he can't get it out. And he needs to mature mentally and physically to be a better big guy And like right now, like be between the end of this game and next week, that's what Eduardo Andre needs to do. Um, who else? Breidenbach. Breidenbach's just a weird guy to watch. He looks like a serial killer. I mentioned that. But he can shoot the three, and then he dribbled and, you know, made some plays sometimes, and then he's a big guy. I don't know what to do with him. I don't know what he is. Hopefully he can improve and give some minutes inside or give some minutes uh, guard, guarding bigger guys, and we'll see how that goes. Uh, Bryce, my buddy Bryce McGowan, welcome to the Big Ten. Uh, you, you, this isn't high school. you, you got to be physical. you got to be quick. You can't fuck around with the ball like you did, and that's why Bryce really didn't do much in this game. I mean... I think the announcer said this, when they game plan against you in college, it's a completely different game. 
than what you played before. And, you know, that's going to be a learning process for Bryce. Uh, we miss Trey McGowan quite a bit. Uh, I, you know, people complain about Alonzo Verge. Probably I saw some complaints on Twitter. Uh, I don't think Alonzo Verge is a problem. He has learned to dish the ball a lot better than he had. He had some turnovers, and the... I mean, part of that is understanding, learning where your players are on the floor, getting used to being a team together, and playing more together and figure out where other guys are and where they're not. Only There's two things that bother me about Alonzo Verge. Number one, why do you never pass the ball to Kasei Tominaga? I, literally. I, you drive inside, Tominaga's standing in the corner all by himself, and he gets no pass. He gets no pass, no balls. I, I, what? I, I don't, does he hate the guy? Uh, other thing that bothers me is the constant looking for the foul thing. You know, if they're going to call a foul, they're going to call a foul. I'm a contrarian, and you need to understand what that means. That means if you look at me and say, hey, oh, I got fouled. I'm not calling fouls for you, you son of a bitch. It just pisses me off because I'm a contrarian. I'm going to do exactly opposite probably what you want. It's got me in a lot of trouble my entire life. But that's who I am. Be true. To thy own self, be true. And somebody needs to take Alonzo aside and say, stop trying to draw fouls all the time. It's a good, you're doing good, but the whole lay on the floor it does nothing. And it probably pisses off refs. Okay, uh, 68 to 55 lost Indiana. Uh, yeah, it would have been nice to come out with a win here and start off the Big Ten season with a bang. And you know what else would have been nice? It would have been nice to see the Indiana fans go insane. Because I know for them to lose to Nebraska on their home floor at the start of the season, they would have pooped themselves to death. Oregon Trail, dysentery, starting in Indiana, would have been nice to see. Fortunately, it's not. Maybe we'll get them at home. I don't know what our schedule is. You know why that? You know why I don't know what our schedule is? It's because uh, I haven't looked. Probably not going to really look. I'm going to do what you should do when it comes to Nebraska basketball. I'm going to take these games one game at a time. I'm not going to project into the future and go, oh, we're going to finish last. I'm just going to watch and see what happens. See if the team grows. See if the team gets better. I don't have any expectations. There you go. Leave some comments. Subscribe to the channel. Tell me how you're going. Let me know what you want for Christmas. All right. I'd like a, a Husker victory to actually do an instant reaction to a Husker victory. and uh, uh, Might have to resort to women's basketball, which wouldn't be bad, but... Oh, well. Hope you're doing well. Take care of yourselves. Merry Christmas, and go Big Red.